All right. So welcome to Late Night with Coral. And today we're here with Jody Schwartz, a Vassar professor who works with Coral, and Haley Pregnell, an experienced diver who's been to Key Largo multiple times and participated in many coral diving um, programs. Evening, guys. Thank you for coming. Um, we just have a few questions for you. So first, how does your work relate to co coral, Mrs. Schwartz, and why is it important? Um, I study corals, but not corals as an ecosystem, but rather corals as a symbiosis between an animal and a plant-like organism. And I'm interested in this because the symbiosis um, is what feeds both partners, both the coral and the symbiont. And without the symbiosis, coral reefs wouldn't form at all. So it really is at the heart of coral reef ecosystems. Fascinating, fascinating. And Haley, what, can you explain your experiences with the coral and how they're important? Okay, um, on every spring break that I've been on in high school, I go to Key Largo with a bunch of students, and one of the dives that we do is partnered with the Coral Restoration Foundation, and what we do is they train us the day before in the classroom, and then we go to their nursery, um, the coral nursery where they actually grow the coral fragments and then we harvest those and prepare them to be shipped to the real reef where we plant them so hopefully colonies can grow and onto the reef. So here we have two perspectives. One is which on the micro level and one on the macro level. And both of you know that like the, the, the smaller levels can of course impact the larger levels. So Jody, how do you think that your work can be um, used like in bigger, larger, okay. larger uh, scenarios. So one of the biggest problems on coral reefs is coral bleaching, yeah. um, where corals, when they are impacted by high temperature water, can lose their symbionts. So the research that I do is aimed at understanding how the symbiosis functions and how it's regulated. So if you can understand how it's regulated, then you might understand what happens when corals bleach, and then you might be able to develop ways to try to counteract bleaching or, or reduce its severity. Now, do you just study the symbiosis from a more genetic perspective or a biochemical perspective? Mm -hmm, both, actually, yeah. I'm interested in understanding what are the pieces that put the two partners together, and those pieces are things like proteins and fats. Um, so that's at a biochemical level, and um, to try to figure out what those proteins and fats are, you have to understand and study the genes of the coral, and that's more the genetic level. Um, so would you, for the, in a more pragmatic sense, do you have any advice for the practical like tank keeper as to how they should maintain their coral to maintain the symbiosis? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I myself do not keep beautiful coral reef tanks like you do here at Arlington High School, so I'm, you are probably more of an expert on that than I am. Um, but of course, light is important because um, the corals need light for their symbionts to grow. So you need light, you need the right temperature, you need the right chemical balance without too many nutrients in the water, and you need the right pH. Yeah, we maintain all those levels, so we try. We try our best. Yeah, too. we try our best too. <laughs> yep. Um, and you, and you, Haley, do you um, own an aquarium, or have you worked with coral in aquariums before? I used to own a fish tank when I was seven. <laughs> um, no coral though. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. But similar, you know, similar idea. You got to maintain a stable environment and whatnot. Yeah. Um, can you think of any one habit that any person can change to impact coral, like in our small community? So. Well, the biggest problem facing coral reefs is climate change and an increase in global temperature. Um, it's very difficult for one person to impact that, but if everybody were to adopt practices that reduce the amount of resources they use overall, that would reduce the amount of carbon that, that those people use, and that would reduce then the increase in temperature in the climate. Um, and Haley, with your work with the Coral Restoration Foundation, have they ever like, um, you know, advertised different ways to reduce our carbon footprint? Um, the day that we were trained, we did have a lecture uh, through a PowerPoint, and they went through some of the ways, but mostly when we're on the reef, they advocate um, making sure you don't um, like touch the coral too harshly, and 
because um, they're animals, you need to be gentle with them, and just ways of preserving the reefs and make sure you're um, a responsible diver. Yeah. So. So on the one perspective, you have a responsibility to the planet from a mm -hmm. climate perspective, but then there's also the physical mm -hmm. responsibility when you're actually near the coral. Right, there are different impacts on corals that operate at different scales. There's the local impact of people actually, you know, knocking over corals, um, but then there's the global scale that involves the climate, and there's everything in between, you know, like pollution running into the water. So corals are impacted by events that occur at lots of different scales. Yeah, um, and what's, in your mind, like, when you think of coral, what do you think is, like, why is it so important for us to care about in our in our community? So, well, an awful lot of people live on coral reef islands. So the islands that people live on, some of them are built by corals. Um, so if corals bleach and die back, you won't have active regeneration of the reef. Um, coral reefs serve as fish nurseries. Um, so if you like eating fish, and a lot of the world's population relies on fish yeah. for their diet. Um, coral reefs are necessary for that. Um, if you think that the development of new drugs is important for human health, coral reefs are a reservoir of biodiversity from which different drugs could be discovered. Um, if you like breathing oxygen, <laughs> coral reefs are useful because the symbionts that live in corals produce oxygen. Um, yes. So they are important for many, many different reasons. And Haley, uh, similar question, if you have anything Ted, from that perspective. Um, I think also they can act as a buffer between coastal cities and the ocean. So if they're gone, then I think storms would be a lot more devastating. Um, also, they're just beautiful, and I think they're an ecosystem that not that many people gets to appreciate. And I think just the they're home to so much life that if they weren't there, then the life wouldn't be there. And it's just incredible to be down there. So, so much like our national state parks, it's important to yeah. preserve our underwater territories and ecosystems as well. Yeah. So, do we have any questions from the audience for us, for, for our panel? No? Okay. <laughs> oh, yes? Um, what do you do every day? that makes you feel like you make a better impact on the environment for corals specifically? Well, me personally, um, I introduce a lot of undergraduate students to corals and what they are, um, so raising awareness of coral reefs. And um, some of the students who have done work with me have gone on to graduate school and are getting a PhD studying corals, so they will then go out and do good things for corals in their, in their careers. I think that's the same with me, like raising awareness. I keep stickers on all my notebooks, and if someone's like, hey, what is that? And it's a good opportunity to be like, well, it's about coral. This is what it is. This is how you can help, and all that. Yeah. Yes? For Haley, when's the next time you plan to go and study corals? I'm going this spring break again, actually. Um, I think that's in March. And... Hopefully I'll get to talk to more interns and all that because I actually look to go into studying and maybe becoming an intern there one day, so. All right, so I often say that at the crux for our project, um, even though we live in like a small inland community, that if we can apply our care and our um, concern to these coral reefs far away from us, even though we might not directly know the connections we have to them, we can um, accomplish many things in our environment and um, carry our concern to farther extents. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, everything yeah. is connected. Yeah. Even though corals live thousands of miles away from us, they are doing things like producing oxygen that we breathe. So yeah. everything really is connected when you think about ecology and ecosystems. Right. So any anything else you'd like to add that you felt you didn't emphasize enough? No? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody should learn to scuba dive or at least snorkel so they can yeah. experience corals themselves. Yeah, we actually made brochures about safe diving and what to do to not impact the marine life and coral. Would you like to receive some so you can sure, to your students? Sure, I would students? love to. Great. Thanks. And you can take some to your um, spring break or to the CRF. Definitely will. All right. Thank you. So at that.
Thank you both for coming here today and for sharing your thoughts and your perspectives. We also got you a t-shirt. Oh. T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Very own a um, positive correlation shirt. Yeah, and there's a welcoming message to our network. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful t-shirts, by the way. Thank you. And on the back it says, hands and fins off the reef, because we know the, that's the motto that you guys follow when you mm -hmm. safe, dive safely. Mm -hmm. So, All right. With that, I think we we're going to conclude the Late Night with Coral. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.